Welcome to my channel, I'm Dr. Romano. Have you ever wondered how your relationship went sour and you could have actually did it a little bit different? Have you ever wondered why that person took things from you? And have you ever wondered how you could have protected yourself? Well, I'm sure that all of us are in the same boat at a certain time of our life, whether it's today or tomorrow, or whether it's your spouse or a relative or a sibling or a parent, whoever it may be. But there are certain measures that you could actually take to protect yourself. Now, of course, what do most people want? Well, I study psychology, not just finance. So yes, I'm a doctor of finance and I specialize in hedge fund selection. But part of my beginning era of college was studying psychology. And people want financial stability. There's people that want to make it for themselves, make their own money. And there's people out there that want your money and want to take it away from you. And those are the people that you have to watch out for. Now, of course, when you're in a relationship with someone or you're entering a relationship with someone, they're going to be on their best behavior, correct? Or when you're growing up in a family and your parents are trying to keep everything together, you know, their comment could be, oh, don't talk to your sister or brother like that. They would never do that to you. Or if you're dating someone and, you know, the conversation, it's a little difficult to come up to talk about finances, who's going to pay for the apartment, or whether you're going to pay 50, 50% 50 on the house mortgage, etc. After 20 years, these questions come about in a legal situation that happens to a lot of people. Relationships, not all relationships are going to last forever. You have to remember it's in your chart. This is what life is about. We are just riding the roller coaster and there's going to be ups and downs in everyone's life. Now, I've ha I have met people that have told me that they have nothing going on in their life and their life has been exactly the same. But you see, maybe that's how they, they view their life. In my case, I learn from my experiences. They may be good experiences, bad or whatever, but somehow I sit back as things happen and progress and I take it in and I try to understand the situation. Like, why did that happen? Why did this happen, etc., and how I could have improved it. Like as if you're a director and you're sitting in the playhouse watching the stage. When something bad happens to you financially, you have to say, well, you can't blame yourself and you can't blame others, but what you could have done was to say to yourself, what could you have done different for that not to happen? Okay. Now, for example, you are dating whoever it may be, and somehow it gets serious and you want to buy a house together. Both parties have their, their reasoning as to why they want to do that. So yes, there are people that want to use you for your down payment and, and also want to take advantage of you. There's also people that need a second person to buy a house, let's say and they need their credit because today, unfortunately, interest rates staying so low for so long, the price of real estate has gone through the roof. So the average newlywed couple has to basically qualify for a $300,000 mortgage, $350,000 mortgage, each person. That's a lot of money and that's a huge down payment to come up with. However, could you on the same salary afford a $700,000 house? And so the question is no. So people come together in relationships for many different things. And sometimes that's financially. And so as a doctor of finance, I'm going to explain to you how you could protect yourself. 
There's a number of reasons of you trusting someone and you respecting someone, but you have to remember that everyone has a different reasoning and a different understanding in life, as well as a different personality and a reason why they're doing that. So for example, you may enter a house mortgage with um, someone that you like, husband, wife, uh, partner, whoever that may be. And sometimes some people, they take control. That's their personality. And some people like letting someone else take control. Or what if the person always brainwashes you and tell you, oh, I'm better at this. You can't do this because you're not capable. Well, that's all programming on how that person will take advantage of you. And so what you have to do to make sure that you don't get taken advantage of is when you enter a uh, agreement, meaning a relationship and you're buying a house or a piece of real estate or even a business, one, I would advise you to always have separate bank accounts. Okay. Never give your, your per partner or whoever you're living with or you're creating this relationship with it. Never ever give out your private information to them because there are all ways that people get cheated. Now, for example, you allow the other person to write out the mortgage checks and you give the cash to that person. Well, by you giving the cash to that person, you are allowing them to fraud you when they're ready to do so. Now then, so basically you're entering a relationship that's only going to get worse and you are allowing them to have more control over you. So how do you not let that happen? Well, so first of all, if you have two people that own a house in a relationship, whether they're married or not, unfortunately, just because you're married to that person, that that's not a legal binding that says you're going to get 50, 50 depends where you live, what state. However, what if, okay, the other person that's going to cheat you writes out all the checks with their checkbook including paying your bills with their checkbook. Well, unfortunately, when it's time to get a divorce or end that relationship and you sell the house or the apartment or whatever it is, the business, they will take you to court for every single check they wrote out. And they will take you to court for exactly what they what they basically what they have on paper is what you owe them but basically you were either giving them the cash or you were you know uh allowing them to manage things so and and of course how dare you question these type of people but these things happen so never give cash in that situation you always either do a transfer, you know, like uh, Zelly has a Zelly. Uh, you could have two separate bank accounts and each person could pay the mortgage directly. So that's what I would advise you on paying it separate. Now, remember, if they should do it ahead of time and say, oh, don't worry, I'll just do it out of my account. They're going to take that in the future and cheat you. So if they're taking control of the finances, you could guarantee you they will cheat you. It's just how these people are. They will be your best friend. They'll smile. They'll say all good things about you, or they could be really vicious and continue to put you down, which actually disturbs you emotionally, thinking that you're insignificant and that you're not capable of managing the finances. So abusive people, this is what they're good at. Now, sometimes abusive people could be also successful people in the office. For example, how do you get rid of your coworkers to move up to the director position? Those type of people are highly manipulative and they will cheat you on every possible way. Now they could do it with a respectful approach or they could just happen to fall in the right time, right position. They know who to talk to, etc. 
I don't view success as moving up the ladder, unfortunately. I view ex, uh, success as happiness and what you like to do. Financial success is different, but you have to remember that just because someone becomes a director, think about how they got there. Even in the office, these things happen. People get cheated all the time. And so for if you being in a relationship with someone, the person may be handsome or pretty and so sweet with a lot of manners and say thank you and, and all these type of things and bring the flowers when they're supposed to, but that's an act they're putting on. And so protecting yourself in that relationship is the most important thing. Never ever give control to the other person. And this is very important because when you do that, you're going to get cheated. And do not blame anybody else for it except yourself. It starts with you making sure that you write your own checks, you keep your checkbook separately, you don't share your mail. If you actually have to get a, a safe deposit box to hide your stuff, or a post office account to have your mail sent there. I know this is extreme, but you have to do it. You must always remain in control of your own finances. And now to further protect yourself, you don't need to be making millions of dollars every year. Some of my videos, I talk about, you know, a lot of financial stuff. And of course, people who invest in hedge funds, you have to be a millionaire or, or more. But the point is, is that I talk about a private foundation and protecting your assets. If you don't want to go to that extreme asset protection, you could create an LLC for your house. Okay. It's very simple. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You simply go to the department of state or secretary of state, whoever it is in your state, and you create an LLC with the property address. Don't put your name on the, on the LLC. It's the property address. So if it's uh, uh, 10,000, 10,000 East 57th Street, LLC, okay? Then on the actual ownership of the LLC, you have to put your name or you could create a trust. You could create a trust so that all the property that you have, whether it's, I don't know what you have, stocks and bonds or a retirement account, whatever it may be, each thing should be in its own LLC. And the owner of that LLC has got to be that trust. Now, when I talk about trust and uh, private foundations, so of course there's a huge difference. I don't want to get into this video. A trust has more bendability uh that the courts someone could sue it and it could be changed whereas a private foundation if you put the legal documents in there such as i call it a constitution it's not really a constitution but it's a legal document that you have registered and what has to be done what will be done what happens when you can't think for yourself who's going to manage that trust what they could do for it etc but for someone that's just willing to you know protect their assets because they're in a relationship or they're entering a relationship you have to remember that you worked for that and don't ever think that you have to share it with somebody else because the moment that that relationship ends that person is going to become very vicious and you could guarantee it that 90% of the people and the public out there will cheat you and they become extremely vicious at the end of the relationship. So if you're entering the relationship thinking it's going to last, you're, 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 in a, you're basically, you're living a fantasy like a movie or entering the relationship thinking that you have to trust someone. No, trust is earned over time. And yes, there are people who are paranoid out there and they should be paranoid. Those are the extremes, but you don't have to be paranoid and you don't have to worry about these things if you do it ahead of time. 
So I have a friend who owns many houses. I'm going to use this as an example. Won't say the name, but she's an extremely beautiful person. Not just her face, her soul. She exudes this really kindness that I really like about her. And I met her at the gym when I first moved to Colorado. She got married and on her second marriage, he killed himself in a hotel in Colorado right off of E-470. And she told me the story and when she told me this, I was just, I didn't know how to react because those type of things don't happen to everyone. However, at the same time I met her, she had hired someone for some construction work and basically he pushed his way into her house. She lives in a very nice neighborhood and with her husband's money or her money, however it happened, they were able to buy a lot of houses, like I don't know if it's 10 or 20, whatever it is. And so she basically went through this this emotional state where her husband kills himself, he's a dentist, and now she has this, this heavy type of situation on her, her hands. And she has two kids. Someone like that is gonna make mistakes and they're going to look for someone that's stronger in their life. And this guy that she started dating Unfortunately, he's a, a moldable sign, Gemini's. And so he basically took control of the situation. And unfortunately, it became an abusive relationship to the point where she, I don't even think that she could get rid of him because she would have to pay him off. She has all this real estate and in the state of Colorado or in many other states, if you're living in the same house with someone that you're dating and you could prove it, they're entitled to half of what you have without a marriage license. So in certain states, you actually have to get married. And as soon as you get married, like in Nevada, you're automatically owner of everything, half of what they have. That's really scary. So this is why people have to protect themselves. If you don't want to go to the extreme level, as I talk about in other videos, about a private foundation in a, another country, such as Luxembourg or Belize, well, you could create a simple trust. You go to a company such as Northern Trust in Chicago, and, you, and don't go to your lawyer or your son-in-law or your friend who's a lawyer. These things, you go to a big company, okay? And you create a trust and you put all your real estate as the owner. The trust is the owner. This way, in case your relationship goes sour, and it unfortunately will, because part of relationships are you either have a... Um, type of sexual relationship, you either have a companion relationship, whatever it may be. But unfortunately, a lot of relationships out there are based on sex. And so when you stop having sex with the person, the relationship is over. Now, unfortunately, you should not feel bad for what someone else doesn't have, okay? Because when your life is you're, you're basically, you have half now and you get sued. Now you have half again. Who's going to help you? And the question is no one. You're out in the street. You'll have to live in a car. Now, this is why I tell you to put your assets in its own LLC. The owner of the LLC is the, the trust or the private foundation. And that's it. This way, if this person that you're dating or you're married to or you're living with and becomes your, your marriage partner, they can't take anything from you. You will never know until the day it happens that they were your worst enemy. I have a friend who her husband at the time was cheating on her with her next door neighbor while she was at work as a school teacher. Now, I could go on and on and on and on, but the relationship went sour after that. 
who should you blame if it's him or her? Honestly, it, you can't blame anyone but yourself. And so private foundation or a, a trust, and you must remember to put all your assets in that. Thank you so much for watching. And please remember to subscribe to my video channel and also do thumbs up so other people get to watch these videos. And please send me questions to live chat so that I could answer your questions directly in another video. Thank you so much.